The Sleuthu Links is a cultural exchange program which was set up by Skull Community College and a school in the Sleuthu about 10 years ago. The exchange program started up with the help of Irish Aid, but in recent years it has become an independent exchange between Skull Community College and Holy Names High School in the Sleuthu. So how students can get involved is they first apply and then they go through a series of interviews and finally this year six students were chosen to go to this issue in South Africa. We started in Cork Airport and we flew to London Heathrow and then we took a very long 11 hour flight to Johannesburg and then we drove six hours to our accommodation in Lesotho so it was a very long journey but it was definitely worth it when we got there. Yeah. We were all exhausted but we couldn't have looking around at scenery and everything it was just so beautiful we knew once we got to Lesotho where we were because loads of mountains just suddenly appeared and it was just beautiful we arrived there around sunset so it was really nice uh, even though we all were so tired no one could fall asleep because yeah. there was too much to look at and <laughs> our first experience of Africa yeah. was something we didn't want to miss anyway. yeah it was surreal yeah it was really nice the morning after we arrived in Lesotho we went straight to Holy Names High School and as we drove up the drive we could hear screaming and shouting and people running out of classrooms and the second we got there we were given a huge welcome and loads of hugs and affection and yeah. just a very very big warm welcome from all the students and the teachers so. yeah yeah just they're just so loving like as a group of people they're just so welcoming like we felt at home straight away they were so accepting of us to begin with we just went around to each classroom and introduced ourselves who we were where we came from and as we said we brought with us world maps okay, um, I think this is the map of the world like the one you have for lunch hall and you know the see is all the way down here and we come from ireland and that's all the way up here so we live really far away. It took us 36 hours to travel down to Pazuzu. So, yeah, we are very far. Um, so each of them have different densities. So the oil and spice, will say, at the top, and they don't mix with each other. And if, if you mix them up, they'd separate again after. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cool. Okay, so then we just put this on the balloon. And will someone tip it over for me? I'll lift it up. Yeah, and shake it a little. Yeah, look, exact same thing. Oh, I think we put a little bit too much. <laughs> That's the gas made with the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we went to their kind of talent show where they showed some traditional dances and songs and they had made these skirts out of plastic which uh, had bottle tops underneath that made a rattling noise and it was just amazing like they're they're just so talented and they were just so good at what they were doing. So we put on their skirts, their plastic skirts that they wear and we did a bit of their dance and then a bit of our dance and they absolutely loved it. They were laughing and screaming and thought it was hilarious that we tried. <laughs> Obviously we were nowhere near as good as them <laughs> but um, they just thought it was very funny that we tried it and the boys also... The boys also uh, tried out the traditional kind of... The males do a dance with wellies. They put wellies on and they kind of slap them. Yeah. And the two boys who went over with us, they did their kind of replication of yeah. that as well. So they thought it was very funny that we'd <laughs> tried our hand at their dances. Yeah, yeah they loved it. And after a talent show, actually, um, they just ran up on stage and started dancing to whatever music was playing to leave us all out. And they were just incredible. Like, nothing was planned. They just ran up on stage and they had such confidence and they were so comfortable with each other. Like, around 600 students and they didn't care. Like, they were just so comfortable.
all the students in the school and they just started dancing and they brought us up on stage and we attempted to dance with them but <laughs> we were showing up by them of course but it was just amazing it was so much fun we danced for a good half hour and we were wrecked by him but they were like oh, come back come back <laughs> but no it was it was great fun yeah we couldn't believe it like we that would never happen in our school they were all just very comfortable with performing in front of each other and just being themselves in front of each other and I don't know, it just kind of was a very nice thing that they didn't really care yeah. and that they didn't really judge each other at all. On the weekend, we didn't have to go to school, obviously, so we decided we'd do a bit of exploring the Suthu. So uh, the first day on the Saturday, we decided to visit Katse Dam, which is a huge dam in the Suthu. In, it's called the Highlands Water Project, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it basically provides water for Lesotho and they also export water from there to uh, South Africa. So mm. it's a very big source of income for Lesotho as well. Yeah. So we had to drive over these huge mountains mm. with a sheer drop on one side and a minibus. Yeah. <laughs> and there were all these kind of skull and crossbone signs and mm. kind of stay in low gear danger. for <laughs> next, yeah, exactly, next five kilometers, mm. danger. And there was one point where we were just going over a cliff and you couldn't see, it was like a roller coaster, you couldn't see where you go and you just went down. Yeah, you couldn't and see the end of the road. It was yeah. frightening. Oh, how's everyone feeling about the massive drop? Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, like right now? <laughs> cool face arm. Oh my god. Ashley? Perfect road for everyone, so. Oh, we're on our way to see the dam. Yeah, that's so pretty cool. Be cool. meters up. <laughs> Perspective, but, but it is huge. huge. So big. It is amazing. There was a car parked at the <laughs> bottom of the dam, and we couldn't even make out that it was a car. It was so yeah. far down, and we were like, "Is that a car?" And yeah, we just zoom in on the camera to have a look at it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it was amazing. Yeah. So on the way back down the mountain, after we were breaking so much coming down, um, we started to see smoke coming out from the bottom of our minibus. So we just passed like a checkpoint sort of thing and um, we all got out and the smoke was everywhere so we decided to leave it cool a little bit and there was these people coming up to us selling us things and we were trying to say no it's okay so we waited a bit for the smoke to die down but um, then around five minutes later uh, we heard a pop and we all stopped the car, got out, looked out and our hubcap was a few meters up the road. <laughs> so we were like, oh no, if this continues, then we're in big trouble. So we were still going down the mountains like so. And it did bit, continue? It did continue, like the hubcap kept on falling off and it's just, it just terrifying. <laughs> on the Sunday morning we decided to go to Mass. So we went to our local church and when we went in, we heard that the service was going to be about two and a half hours long and we'd missed the mass in English so this is going to be in Sasuthu. So we thought we might sneak out after about an hour, we'd sit at the back and experience it and then head off. But um, uh, people would come up to us and be like, hi, where are you from? And one man uh, showed a special uh, interest in where we were from and what we were doing there and everything. And it turned out he was the priest and he gave us a big welcome at the beginning and saying welcome to our Irish friends and they've come here to worship with us today. And then we all looked at each other and we were like, we can't leave now, we're gonna have to stay for the whole thing. So we understood not a whole lot of it. There was a bit of it he did do in English, but we were able to enjoy it because everyone was dancing and singing yeah. and kind of making their, they make this sound that's kind of like, <laughs> and they all made that yeah. in, just in the middle of and like old Their guns songs. and everything. Exactly. They had drums and things. They were just so lively. <laughs> through the mass 
class, one of our teachers got a phone call and he went outside and he didn't come back for about half an hour and we were wondering where he was and it turned out that he was outside playing with all the kids that were outside. <laughs> so we decided to join him um, while well, the rest of them stayed in the church, all the teachers. So we went out to these adorable little kids and we were playing games with them and we were playing with them by these what we thought were chains. So we thought it was just a game, see who could jump the highest to reach the chains. So we decided to kind of help them with their <laughs> game, but we picked them up. We were like um, doing like rocket ships up to the chains and everything. Uh, it turns out after one chain t a pull too many that they were the bells. Like, and the bells had gone off in the middle of their two and a half hour service. <laughs> so we thought maybe it was best to kind of leave. <laughs> this nun came out and yeah. she said, Oh, would you mind not playing here? Could you play over there? Like, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so um, yeah, so we went over to a kind of green area and we were singing songs with them like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And, yeah, one of the yeah. little kids. I. They had very limited English, obviously, because they were about four or five. Yeah. And I asked her, oh, would you sing for me? And she didn't understand what I was saying. And then I just started singing Twinkle Twinkle, and she started singing along, and she knew all the words to it. So it was amazing. Yeah. It was really cool. And suddenly all the kids were singing, like around 30 kids, and it was just, yeah. it was so sweet. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are up above the were brought by uh, the owner of our accommodation to see some dinosaur footprints that they have. There's actually a real dinosaur called the Lesuthosaurus. So um, we were brought down to this kind of riverbed and there were footprints. And on our way, because we had to walk kind of a little bit far to get to them, uh, these kids just emerged out of nowhere and they grabbed onto our hands and they had no shoes on and mm. their clothes were really dirty and they just held onto our hands, didn't say anything and walked with us the whole way yeah. and they were kind of just holding on to our arms and legs and wanting to be picked up and stuff. It was very kind of surreal that they just attached onto us so quick so exactly come out of nowhere. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but we each had kind of like our own kid Well, they kind of picked us really yeah they just left <laughs> they kind of they held our hand and uh the kid that was holding onto my hand her stomach was so bloated like you wouldn't see that with the kids in the school because they get fed every day and get given water but these kids were out in the countryside so they didn't really have any of that so her top was just closed with one button really because her stomach was so bloated it wouldn't really go over the whole thing so that was sad to see as well so when we were in school we we're seeing kids getting an education getting fed mm. whereas when we saw these kids in the countryside they probably weren't getting an education they weren't getting fed a lot and it was yeah. kind of brought it home a bit brought it back to kind of reality yeah. so on the next day um, we went to the primary school which is just beside the secondary school that we've been visiting and we got shown around all their classrooms all the students and they were so sweet and um, they all assembled for us and they did a religious song they they all did their own kind of march dance away back to their classrooms and they were they were so lovely they were so sweet but one of the problems they have is that um, they just don't have any running water so some kids could go the whole day without having a glass of water or a drink mm -hmm. because they might not get it at home so they get parched every morning but they wouldn't necessarily get water the secondary school beside them has running water but they can't really be taking all their water for all the primary school kids. Because mm. one of the things is that primary school education became free in Lesotho for everybody last year. So lots of kids who are living in poverty are now going to school. So lots of those kids won't get breakfast in the morning. So the primary school are trying to provide breakfast for those kids and lunch as well. But it's very hard for them to do that without running water. Mm -hmm. But they're still doing their best, which I think is amazing, really. Mm -hmm. but, um, also, um, the primary school, they don't have nearly enough teachers as they should have because the government won't send them any teachers. Like there may be qualified teachers out there somewhere, but the government aren't sending them any. So there are two classes of 60 with one teacher per 60 students. So it's hard for a teacher to kind of know all the like learning abilities of their students and get closer students when there's so many of them. It's hard for them to learn properly.
there are two classes of 60 with one teacher per 60 students. So it's hard for a teacher to kind of know all the like learning abilities of their students and get closer students when there's so many of them. It's hard for them to learn properly. When we went around to the classrooms, there was one classroom in particular that we heard them singing and we tried to get in, but the second we walked in the door, they all sat down straight away. So we were trying to ask them, well, can you sing for us? But they were very shy. But then a teacher came in and spoke to them in Susuthu and asked them to sing for us. And they stood up and they started singing this song about, uh, it was to teach them the days of the week and the months in English. And they were singing this song about what their mother taught them when they were younger. And it was it was just so cute and so yeah. sweet. Yeah. It was how their mother kind of like carried them through her pregnancy and then things like that and how long she did it for. Kind of like she carried us on Monday, on Tuesday, and Wednesday, and on January, on February, and March, and things like that. It was really sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also another thing we noticed when we went around to the classrooms, for from very young even the three or four year olds, they all were learning about sexual harassment and we just thought this was so kind of shocking to us basically mm -hmm. because that's something that you wouldn't learn for ages in Ireland, like 12, 13 basically. You wouldn't know, have a clue what it was about when you were five. You wouldn't have to know really back yeah. like at that age of year but over there obviously it's a problem so they'd have to learn about it from a young age to kind of be able to tell what it is how to avoid it cause yeah. especially with HIV being a huge problem in Lesotho mm. they're they're the third highest rate of HIV and AIDS in the world so it's a huge problem that they are tackling and you see everywhere their posters in all the schools so they obviously are making a mm. bit of progress with it but mm. they have a long way to go anyway still mm. which actually late because oh, yeah. yeah. uh, Later. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, do you want to say a bit about that? Yeah, I say a bit about the kid's name. Being, he's 16 and he's all the time. He's telling to Yeah. Later that day, um, there's a HIV clinic just down the road from the school, so we were brought down to visit it. And when we walked in, everybody's face kind of lit up seeing us there and it was kind of strange that people were in there in a bad situation and then seeing us they were smiling yeah. and stuff but um yeah when we went in we kind of we don't have any footage really from that because we thought it would be a bit insensitive mm. to film people in there but even so we were brought into rooms and watched people getting tested for it for us that was we felt kind of awkward and a bit out of place but I guess they just wanted to show us what the reality was because we were watching like I'd say the boy was about two years old yeah. and he was getting tested for AIDS so it was a bit sad or for HIV sorry so yeah it's it kind, kind of, of it's quite upsetting really so as well in the HIV clinic they had a pharmacy which were basically just a few shelves like compared to our pharmacies here is you couldn't really, it was just a few shelves and they didn't even have the necessary uh, like painkillers like norfin and things, they were out of it and they had so few medicines on the shelves like to think that they're kind of treating people with HIV AIDS as well and they didn't have a lot of resources, it's just, it's awful to see. And when we asked them, when do you think you'll get the next um, supply of norfin delivered, they said we don't know, like they yeah. just had no idea when it was going to come or, you know, mm. which was bit difficult for them I'd say to to keep functioning. The main thing I learned and realized when I went to Africa was that from like my whole life all I've experienced about Africa are like ads on TV where it's all showing people living in poverty and hunger sickness and that they all need help and they have nothing and they're all sad but when I went there, it was the complete opposite. Everybody was so happy. They all take joy out of everything that they do. And they're dancing and they're singing. We basically danced our way through the week yeah. <laughs> because everybody just wanted to keep being happy, keep upbeat. Mm -hmm. And when coming back home, there was a huge kind of come down mm -hmm. because you came back to pressures and you know, deadlines and everything. And it's just so different to how they live, so relaxed and peaceful and happy. And 
it was just so different to the image I've been fed of Africa since I was born. So it's just, it's a completely different reality mm. than you think Africa is. Even though they aren't wealthy, they're so rich in other aspects such as culture and traditions and everything. And they love showing us their cultures and we love seeing it. It was just, they're just amazing. They're so talented and their traditions that have been around for years and years, hundreds of years, they've stayed with them and they still take pride in showing people what they love to do and everything. <laughs> okay, so we're leaving our hut now. So yeah, pretty sad. Finishing our adventure in Africa. Lock the door for the last time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. This isn't going very smoothly. Now that's unlocked. Mm -hmm. Now. <laughs> yeah! Not yay. <laughs> well, that's it.